I really didn't want to shit on the MetaQuest 3 because it's a really cool device. <clears throat> the problem is this thing has been shipped out the door way before it was ready. There are so many problems that have suddenly popped up online after they released their version 57 or whatever it is that has totally broken the headset. That tells me it's probably very much been rushed out the door. Not a smart move. Now I wanted this to be a, like a regular review of the MetaQuest, but I really can't do that because I can't use the headset when it's not working as it's intended. Uh, especially what I'm talking about then is of course the uh, wired connection to the network. Uh, it's supposed to be to 2400 megabit per second and right now it's at half that. Now it jumped up to 14 and it keeps going up and down like that because it's really unstable in this version of it. Now apparently I'm not the only one who has this problem luckily because I've been on forums and seen that that is actually happening to a number of people, not to everyone because it's dependent on what sort of router model you're using. And for my sake, all my routers have been TP-Link because that's what I normally use. And even if you have the problem, you probably won't notice it. Like Steve Nose did when he praised this as the best wireless experience. But if you look at his overlay, you can actually see the megabytes per second fluctuating. You're so used to 12,000 megabits per second that we didn't even notice. But that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like this, stable and perfect at 2400. Now this was posted by Kai, Cobra Kai 87 at uh, Reddit, and he is using Lynx's Hydra router, and he's experiencing no problem at all, and it looks great. So what's wrong with the TP-Link and Asus routers? I don't know. But hopefully, Meta does, and they'll fix it soon. I've wrote, written a bug report both to Meta and to TP-Link, so hopefully they're both working on it. And, well, we'll see what happens. That's a pretty big, big thing. You won't really uh, notice it, as long as you're just using the internet and downloading and using it locally. When you're noticing it is when you're trying to use this, uh, a wireless headset for your PC, which is my main use for this uh, headset. There are other problems as well, like the microphone. You can probably hear my microphone now. I can switch between this microphone and this microphone. And as you can see, I've actually put a little piece of uh, microphone foam over the microphone. The microphone is actually placed in the same place where you would have your docking connectors. Um, and in the front here, you have like this little pinhole, which is uh, a noise cancelling uh, microphone. But the main microphone is here, right beside your nose, and the typical place you'll be blowing air when you're pronunciating certain types of words, which is stupid, because that just totally blew out the entire microphone. If you had moved the microphone like a bit over to the side, then this wouldn't be an issue. So that's a very big engineering fault. Uh, I think the microphone is probably just fine, but it's just placed wrong. They can fix that, of course, by opening up the jack to uh, uh, be able to use like your regular mounted headphones and use the microphone here instead. Problem solved, really. Uh, <clears throat> I, I thought you could do that on the old headset, but apparently you can't. So we'll see what happens there. Other problems is this uh, battery strap. A lot of people are actually complaining that the extended battery actually stops working. Luckily, I have not had that problem. Other YouTubers were not so lucky, like Chris B Tech, whose battery strap actually failed on him right after he gave it a promising review. And apparently, a lot of the people in his community also had this problem. Now, Meta implies that this is a known issue and they are working on the fix to fix this, but I would actually just replace your head, uh, your your pro strap. Just return it to the store while it's still under a return policy, and get a new one because uh, it's not supposed to be broken. Another thing that I see a lot of people are posting about is uh, dead pixels, especially VR flight sim guy. He was really unlucky all week, and I've gone through not one, not two, not three, but six 
six VR headsets, six Quest 3s to get to the one I'm using right now. All of them have suffered from dead pixels. Check your screen. Go into any type of wide area game and look for the static pixel. It's either black, green, red or blue and it won't change its position compared to your headset. And uh, so if you have that, get a new headset because that's a, manu uh, a manufacturing error. So, so far I haven't really gotten to trying to do like a real review of this headset because I simply can't get it to work as it's intended. And uh, then it would feel unfair to actually make a review of it. I can make a review of the standalone features, but that's not my main use of this headset. I want to use it as a wireless headset. So I'm going to do that at a later point, giving that the update 59 or 60 will actually fix these problems. Uh, if not, I might actually just return the entire headset because my Quest 2 still works as intended. And if I connect this to the same uh, network or the 5G networks, this is working perfectly. So why the hell should I use this? Right now I can tell you that when I actually get a good signal on this over the 6G network, it's incredible. Like the, the frame rate, the, the pancake lenses, the colors, uh, it's so much better. Like even the black metal levels aren't black yet, but they're much better, much better. I do hope that they'll manage to fix it because it's a good headset. I mean, even considering the, the backstrap that which had a little problem during the unboxing, it's more than enough comfortable as long as the battery pack still works. Uh, the lenses are nice. Like, it's just like all of these stupid little mistakes and software errors that tells me that this headset was rushed out the door. They probably want to compete with some of the headsets that are coming down the line. Like, the most obvious one is of course uh, Apple Visions. Also Pico is coming with a new headset, the Pico 5, which has some very impressive stats. Especially if you go for the Pro version, and that even has eye tracking. And they boast to have the same price as the Quest, but with more technology. And PlayStation VR is still like grabbing up some of their high-end audiences that want to have a better experience in VR and trying to get uh, this new chipset out with better graphics is a good idea. We're still not there when it comes to the onboard graphics here as well, but it's a step in the right direction. <laughs> so I'm sharing a lot of my opinions right now, but I can't really do a review until this actually works. And if, if it won't work uh, soon until my re return window is closed, then I'll probably just return it and you won't see a review of it here. And, um, and that sucks because I think um, the headset has potential. If they can just figure out these uh, little dusts in the attic uh, problems here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll talk to you next time.